Hello cadets, welcome back. Today we're facing two big tech problems that will only get worse in the immediate future. Security of Internet of Things and the limitations of blockchain technology. Let's take a look at the first problem. On Friday, October 21st, 2016, a major distributed denial of service attack brought down a large swath of internet connectivity all across the American East Coast, shutting down sites like Netflix and Twitter for a few hours. A bot army flooded servers with millions of illegitimate requests after requests to the point where internet sites we use every day stopped working. How are webcams, printers, and routers to blame for the attack? A piece of malware is downloaded to your main computer, and it spreads to all of your internet connected devices. And sometimes it's even simpler than that. A Chinese company admitted that its line of DVRs and webcams had easily breakable passwords, so the hackers took advantage of this. Because these devices have weak default passwords and are easy to infect, the Mirai web virus has been found spreading to at least 500,000 devices according to internet backbone provider Level 3 Communications. This attack was conducted by millions of hacked internet connected devices. If attacks like this keep happening, they can hinder business, city infrastructure, and can even jeopardize people's lives by bringing down hospital computers like the WannaCry ransomware did back in May of this year. So if left untreated, attacks like this will only get worse with time. There are currently two main limitations to blockchain technology. Number one, fees, or more specifically, microtransactions. Can I send one penny with Bitcoin or Ethereum? Not really, not unless I pay fees that make it not worth it. But the miners have to get paid, and miners contribute to the security of the blockchain. So there's no real way around it. Problem number two, scalability. Currently, Bitcoin approves 4.5 transactions per second. Ethereum approves 13 transactions per second. PayPal approves about 115 transactions per second. And Visa? Visa approves just about 4,000 transactions per second. Uh, yeah, that's a problem because if we want blockchain technology to become mainstream, it has to scale to at least match what Visa is doing right now. Unfortunately, the problem lies with the blockchain technology as it is today. Maybe we need a new type of technology. Maybe IOTA has the answer. Enter the Tangle. I'm Captain Crypto, and welcome to Cryptonauts. Cryptonauts. Now, to understand IOTA, you have to understand the Tangle. But more importantly, you have to understand what it is not. It is not blockchain tech exactly, but it's more like that hot distant cousin at your family reunion that you kind of want to get to know more of, about. <clears throat> Here are the similarities and differences between the blockchain and the Tangle. Most blockchain technology has miners. It has fees. It has blocks that contains transactions. It has hard fork or soft fork capabilities. It uses distributed consensus. And finally, it uses hashcash for proof of work. But the Tangle has no miners. Zero miners. It has zero fees. It has no blocks, so it cannot do hard fork or soft forks. However, it does have distributed consensus, and it uses something similar to Hashcash for proof of work. The Tangle also allows other properties like scalability, quantum security, and offline capabilities, but we'll get to those in a bit. The Tangle is technically called a DAG, or Directed Acyclic Graph. Directed meaning it only points one way, acyclic meaning it is non-circular, and the graph in this case means that the Tangle itself is the ledger for storing transactions. Let's begin with a node. A node is basically a computer that propagates transactions, and when connected with other nodes, it creates a network. But let's just focus on node alpha. Node alpha creates a single transaction called site A. All transactions in the tangle are called sites. This site sits alone in the darkness. It is dark and gray, like my love life. Let's bring in another site. And another, 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 and that's enough. As you can see, the next transactions are creating connections called edges that validate previous transactions. The rule is that one transaction must approve two previous transactions or sites. The gray sites at the end there are called tips. They are unconfirmed transactions. An entire length of related edges to the tip is called a branch. Now each transaction gets something called a personal weight. To quote the white paper, 
that the weight of a transaction is proportional to the amount of work that the issuing node invested into it. So that means they get a little number that is divisible by 3. Site A and B are 1, while site C is 3. The weight of sites are really important. They actually hinder successful attacks to the network because as the transactions or sites become older, they get fatter. Or in Tango Lingo, they get a cumulative weight. Sites can acquire cumulative weights directly or indirectly. So for example, we have site D that has a cumulative weight of 9. The personal weights of sites G, H, I, and F that are directly or indirectly connected to site D add up to a cumulative weight of 9. With dozens of new transactions, there will be several unconfirmed tips at the beginning of the tangle. When you submit your own transaction, there's an algorithm called the Markov Chain Monte Carlo that basically selects two tips at random. Someone can cheat by only validating their own transactions, so the algorithm was designed to prevent that. Here's an example of a fully formed tangle in action. With blockchain technology, the miners helped create consensus. With IOTA, you by yourself are now technically the miner, so just by making transactions, you help create consensus. Let's talk about scalability, because this is the killer feature of IOTA. The Tangle is designed to be lightweight enough to enable transactions to be sent and approved by laptops, phones, cars, drones, and one day, even your fridge. Because of this potential scalability to millions of machines, it will enable what people are calling the fourth industrial revolution. With blockchain technology, the more people that use the system, the slower the entire network becomes. This is because there's a limit to how big a blockchain can be, max one megabyte as of September 2017. And a block is only processed every 10 minutes. Miners can also choose which transactions they want to approve in the block by only approving those with mid to high fees. There are currently over 2,000 unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions at any given time because some transactions fail to include enough of a juicy fee for the miners. So miners have to be picky. With the Tangle, because every transaction must approve two previous transactions, the more people that use the Tangle, the faster the entire network becomes. To show this better, imagine a restaurant in the shape of a square and there's only one door, so everyone must wait a while just to get in. However, imagine a triangular restaurant that serves a buffet. People can come in from any door on the two sides. The blockchain is like an upper class restaurant with a wait list, but the Tangle is like a buffet where everyone can serve themselves at the same time. As you can see, the Tangle scalability will make it possible for millions of internet connected machines to join the network. And we won't have to worry about too many machines bogging it down. Having a lot of machines actually speeds up the network. That's pretty darn cool. To understand Tangle security, you have to understand proof of work. It's very important in preventing Sybil or spamming attacks. The way proof of work works is through using something called Hashcash. Hashcash was invented by Adam Back in 1998 to prevent email spamming. Basically, a computer must solve a simple puzzle to validate something. In IOTA's case, it is validating two other transactions. The computer has to guess an alphanumeric code called the nonce. How well and how fast a computer can solve the nonce is called hashing power. IOTA has developed something very similar to Hashcash for the Tangle. It's just difficult, but simple enough that your grandma's flip phone can use IOTA to validate transactions. The main reason Hashcash has low difficulty is so that simple internet connected machines can join the Tangle. So an easier way to understand hashing power is to just think of it as puzzle solving power. If the accumulated hashing power on the Tangle is large enough, the probabilities of actually completing an attack on the Tangle is very low. This is what the IOTA white paper has to say. As a transaction gets more and more direct or indirect approvals, it becomes more and more accepted by the system. In other words, it will be more difficult, or even practically impossible, to make the system accept a double spending transaction. Reddit user Symphonic underscore Rain Boom brings up a good point when he says the following quote. Oh, just a quick note, IOTA determines a 51% as a 34% attack, so just keep that in mind. In IOTA, every user is a miner, and they are only mining when they are sending transactions. A 51% double spending attack then becomes as simple as an attacker with sophisticated hardware having more computing power than normal users with general purpose hardware. To a degree, 
He's right. As of today, IOTA is still in beta, and the Tangle is in a vulnerable state if someone attacked with a ton of raw computing power. However, there are two things bolstering security right now to prevent any major attack. Number one, the coordinator, or KU for short, are like training wheels for IOTA. Here's a quote for you. Like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all other distributed consensus protocols before it, the IOTA network needs an onboarding mechanism to provide 34% attack protection in its early days. Due to the unique underlying architecture of IOTA, this takes shape of a coordinator. The coordinator, or crew for short, is essentially training wheels for the network until the amount of organic activity on the ledger is sufficient to where it can evolve unassisted, at which point the coup is permanently shut off. Number two is hashing power. The white paper also provides the math, and it basically states that if an attacker gets 10% of the network's hashing power, his chance of manipulating the network is only 0.00001135, basically next to impossible. Even if an attacker gets 34% of the network's hashing power, they still only have a 29% chance of successfully manipulating the tangle to their benefit. So basically, a bad actor needs three times the hashing power of the entire network to actually guarantee successful manipulation. So this is why I'm not worried about IOTA's security, especially when IOTA reaches maturity and the training wheels come off. Also, the structure and backing of the IOTA network will come into play. So the more honest machines that join the Tangle network, the more hashing power. And the more hashing power, the more secure the entire network becomes. Another killer feature of IOTA is data security through quantum resistance. Quantum computing is kind of scary because as soon as quantum computers become mainstream, blockchain technology as we know it today will not be safe. However, IOTA is quantum resistant, meaning it can resist a quantum consensus attack by a million times. The math on this is really tricky, so if you want to learn more, check out the white paper. But for now, here's a direct quote. A quantum computer would be around square 2 to the power of 68 equals 2 to the power of 34, or approximately 17 billion times more efficient in Bitcoin mining than a classical one. Whew, okay, that was pretty heavy, but can you imagine a quantum computer that is 17 billion times more efficient than a regular computer of today? Well, we asked for help from Paul Handy, core developer at IOTA. This is the example he gave us so us mortals could understand. But first, imagine rocket ships made out of ASICs traveling to the sun and a tortoise trying to get to a bush. If you compare the difficulty to an astronomical unit, like the distance from the Earth to the Sun, or 149,597,870,700 meters on average, the quantum computer would only have to walk, in comparison, 9 meters. That quantum computer could be a tortoise, in comparison to the rocket ship of ASICS, but while those rocket ships have to expel a lot of energy to race to the Sun, the tortoise only has to mosey across the bush. So as you can see, because of Tangle technology, we get no fees, no miners, scalability, and a ton of security. But what is it all for? What's the point of having machines transact with each other? There are many use cases, but let's talk about most immediate examples. Cars and solar power. Imagine a car that had its own identity, and more importantly, its own wallet. This car can now pay for parking. If it's an electric car, it can pay for EV charging, and even pay for tolls. But wait, since it can pay for services on its own, it can also charge for services as well. Imagine renting out your car and earning money that way. Now imagine a fleet of cars, each with their own identity and wallets, running around making money. With solar power, if you install Tesla's new solar panels and use the power walls to store energy, you'll be able to sell any excess energy to your neighbors and it will all be automated. Here are some other machines that will benefit from an automated machine economy. Drones, freight trucks, freight ships, toilets. Okay, maybe not toilets, but you get the idea. Finally, IOTA is also pushing the Tangle to be used for the security of things. Machines will have data integrity, meaning they'll be tamper-proof. This will prevent internet-connected machines from being hacked, so no more DDoS attacks and it will even prevent your smart Jeep from being hacked as reported by Wired. IOTA technology can also be used to secure health data, storage data, and they're even trying to secure identities. Right now, they're working with a company called RefUnite, 
where they provide digital identities to refugees. IOTA is also working with a company called Jin Labs to develop small processors that will be able to send millions of messages between thousands of entities. It's supposed to be a trinary async processor. Trinary is basically one more than binary. With binary, you have zero and one. With trinary, you have plus one, zero, and negative one. Essentially, Trinary is more badass. If they can get the processors out, this will be huge because faster processors will be necessary for the new machine economy and the IOTA ecosystem to work together. The future of IOTA looks very bright, and if they can deliver on all of their promises, it definitely has the potential to usher in the fourth industrial revolution. They've already reached 182 transactions per second, surpassing Bitcoin, Ethereum, and PayPal. And someone recently sent $12 million through the network with zero fees. But I think the most interesting outcome would be the growth of smart cities. Just imagine a city where everything is automated. Machines talking to machines, water, power, transportation, and automated parking tickets. Which would still suck, but all of it working in one beautiful robotic dance. The only barrier to an iotic centric world is technology and infrastructure. Mass hardware adoption is necessary if the machine economy is to function as one. Second, we need enough nodes to support the Tangle stream to validate the hundreds or thousands of transactions that will happen as more people and machines join. But I'm sure both of these problems will be solved over time. We just need to give IOTA enough time to grow. So that's it. That's IOTA and the Tangle in a complicated nutshell. If you want to know more, we suggest heading over to iota.org or to the IOTA Slack channel. Links below. So, what's our next video? Well, we're leaving it up to you guys to decide. We've provided a link below to vote on our next content. We've suggested our own topics, but feel free to post them on here or on YouTube, or submit them through our link. As always, HODL, secure your crypto, and may Vitalik and Satoshi be with you always.